So uh, next up here we have Patrick Hoogland, um, who is an avid drummer, um, which was com probably comes in quite handy when he's uh, banging his head against this automated video quality measurement system. Yeah. Um, so with that, Patrick. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, so I'm going to talk about automated video quality tests. Uh, that is a problem we ran into with the WebRTC project. So first, how many have heard about WebRTC before? As a couple, okay. Well, for the rest of you, none. Uh, WebRTC is a web standard that is being developed right now for video and voice chat built into the browser. So we are implementing this right now in, in Chrome, and, and also Firefox and Opera are, are implementing this web standard here. So WebRTC gives you the possibility to, in a web page with JavaScript, acquire a user's webcam and microphone, with their consent, of course, and, uh, and send it over the net directly between the participants. So uh, it, it uses peer-to-peer -peer technology. And all that stuff is built into the standard, so it's real easy to write a video chat application that works regardless of NAT and uh, firewalls and other things that can be in the way. Okay? Um, so the, the Chrome implementation of this is done in, uh, in Stockholm and Mountain View and in Kirkland. And I work in the Stockholm office with, uh, with this project. So uh, we wanted to, to test this. But to explain what we need to test, I'm going to explain briefly how a WebRTC call works. All right. So this diagram here, as you can see, is uh, a very simplified description. So, so what happens here is that we can imagine we have two browsers on two different machines somewhere. Uh, and then it is up to, to the web page to implement that application part there that you can see. Uh, and implement a signaling solution. And the, the point of the signaling solution is to first figure out like who would you like to call with WebRTC, for instance. And, and that can be implemented like a uh, contact list or random or, or whatever. And also the, the signal solution exchanges the information that, that is needed to set up the call, for instance, what codecs do I support, and so on. Uh, we're going to gloss over that part completely and instead focus on number two you can see down there, which is media, when media starts flowing. Okay. So uh, given that we set up a call, how do we test it? So one of the goals we set out to do here was to, to set up a call and measure the video degradation. Because obviously, when we send video over the internet, we're going to have to compress it. Right? Uh, and also in WebRTC, there's a ton of built-in algorithms for uh, uh, bandwidth estimation and like adapting the, the, the encoding parameters to how much bandwidth you have or how lost your connection is. Uh, uh, or as I like to see it as a test engineer, uh, a lot of things that can go wrong, <laughs> a lot of things that can break. So um, we wanted to measure the video quality that comes out on the other end of the call. Uh, and we wanted those measurements to correspond to user perception as much as possible. And what do I mean by that? Well, basically, if a user would think it looks bad, it should get a low score. And if it's artifacts that a user doesn't really notice that much, uh, it shouldn't affect the score too much. We wanted this thing to run continuously. We wanted it to be a reusable tool chain. Uh, with small tools that have well-defined tasks as much as possible so it's, uh, to make it reusable. And we want we wanted the, the implementation work to be a sort of self-contained self unit so we can hand it off to an intern. And that is precisely what we did. We handed it off to our intern, uh, Veli Spatsova from, from Bulgaria, and she implemented it, and it, it worked great. So that's why I'm here to share with you an overview of what goes into making a, a, a tool like this. So we're going to obviously gloss over a lot of details, but hopefully it will give you an idea of what we need to do. OK, so when we started this thing, we already had a test which could launch a browser, open two tabs, uh, launch a small C++ binary, which is a signaling solution, and have the two tabs set up a WebRTC call. Um, so the output video gets fed into a regular video tag, HTML5 video tag. Um, we we had some fake webcam drivers on, on all major platforms uh, so that we could basically feed a known input video into the webcam and have it look like a webcam to WebRTC. Uh, and we also had implementations of the peak signal to noise ratio and structural similarity algorithms. And I'm not going to go into detail what those are, but supposedly together they give a pretty good picture of the video quality. Um, 
All right, so then the first problem to solve was how do we record what goes into the, uh, what's coming out in the video tag on the other side? First, we considered screen scraping solutions where we scrape the pixels on the screen and that kind of thing. But fortunately, we were able to avoid that because uh, uh, you would have to make a platform specific implementation of that. And, you know. Uh, instead, it turns out you can take a canvas tag and tell the canvas tag, hey, canvas tag, capture the pixels that are displaying in that video tag right now. Right? Uh, and then we ho hooked that up to a JavaScript timer that tries to capture at 30 FPS or as fast as it can, really. Uh, and then we run into some other problems, like uh, we can't write the frames to disk from the JavaScript environment, so uh, our intern wrote a Python server uh, that we talk to using WebSockets, and then the Python server writes on the disk. It's, it's a bit the mold, I know. Uh, so after running this, you, uh, that step, you end up basically with a couple of hundred of image files on the disk, and now we run a small tool to consolidate those into one YUV video, that is raw video. <laughs> All right, but there are still some problems. Like, um, we have no idea where the video starts. Like, when we run the test, we don't know where we are starting in the input video because the driver is just going to loop it over and over, right? Uh, and since uh, the algorithms I talked about earlier compare frame to frame and give you a score, you need to compare the right frame in the output video with the right frame in the input video. Otherwise, you're going to get the wrong score. And also, even if we solve that uh, synchronization problem with the camera driver, uh, what if we dropped the first two frames? Then we would compare frame n in the output video with frame n minus 2 in the input video, and our score would be very much punished for something a user would not notice. So that's not good. And also, if the JavaScript happens to not capture all the frames, because I, I sure don't know how to predict uh, how fast the JavaScript will run. Uh, so the trick is to encode barcodes into the input video, All right? So you can see that barcode strip at the top there, it is going to move along with the video. And you see three examples of the video here because this is what our test looks like, like what's going in, what's coming out from the other side, and the canvas that is ca keeping up capturing the stuff there. Um, so how, how will that help us? Well, it, it will make it able for us to encode a unique ID in each frame in the input video and uh, and then later find out which frame we actually capture on the other side. Uh, so the encoder user uses, I, I'm going to go quickly through this detail. So the, the encoder uses a library called Zebra Crossing. Uh, it can generate, generate barcodes from us, for us. So we generate a bunch of barcodes in rising numbers, like one, two, uh, whatever. Uh, then we use, use FFmpeg to convert those to YUV, and then we combine the YUVs to a barcode movie, so that's just going to be a very narrow movie with a moving barcode in it. And then we can stitch that together with an input file of our choosing and create uh, a video such as the one we saw over here. Yeah. Uh, so our setup ends up being feed that video into the fake webcam, have WebRTC acquire that webcam, then we also test that you know, our device uh, acquisition code and all that stuff works for all the operating systems. Uh, we, we capture what we get on the receiving side with the video canvas thing I talked about, decode the barcodes, and then we un analyze it. So the analysis step is the next slide that I'm going to talk about. First, the barcode decoder. So um, what does the barcode decoder do? So it, it takes the YV movie we produced in the capturing step Splits that into a bunch of PNG files because that is what Zebra Crossing understands. Again, using FFM MPEG. Run it through Zebra Crossing and then we get a bunch of numbers. So our tools is going to produce a file we call stats.txt and that is a mapping for each frame in the output video, what is the corresponding frame in the input video. Uh, and that is used in the final anal analysis step here. So then we have this thing that takes the original video, the capture video, and that that mapping, and then it is going to run PSNR and SSCM on each frame uh, using the mapping from stats.txt. Uh, and what we end up with is something like this. Okay, so it's a bit hard to see here in the graph, but uh, what you can see in the graph is that first those lines that you see there, that is the distribution of scores. So each frame is scored individually. And then a big thick line in the middle, that is the average for that particular run. 
so what you can also see, or maybe not, is that we are around 36 decibel peak signal to noise ratio, which I would say is reasonable for internet trans transmitted video. Uh, that big dip on the right there, by the way, is how a regression looks like. And when it goes back up again, that is where the, the regression was rolled back. Uh, and for the structural similarity, uh, similarly, uh, we get consistently, I think, about 0 0.96 out of 1 in, in score there. All right. Uh, so when we put the whole thing together, we end up with that. So uh, as you can see, it's a fair amount of stuff in there. This is the, the parts I, I mentioned earlier. Like you have your input video that you just need to prepare and encode once. And then you, when you run your test continuously, uh, you feed the same video into the webcam. And uh, you, you run the tests, as in our case. Um, and then you, uh, you do the necessary conversions so that you get the YV file and you decode the barcodes and you end up with something you can analyze and produce a, a score from that. Right, so uh, that concludes my talk. Thank you for my time. For your time. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so if you have a live question, I can go to the mics. I, I see somebody up there. And then we can also pull from the dory. Um, so why don't we go live first, please? Uh, hi. So um, a question about the output frames. Does it ever happen that you lose output frames because you couldn't decode the barcode? In other um, words, that the video quality is so low that you can't decode it? Yeah. So um, it hasn't happened very much for us. When it has happened, it has been because WebRTC has been completely broken and it's just rendering black or garbage or, or whatever. So if if the image gets so distorted that not even the barcode library can decode the barcodes, then the image is probably completely broken. So that is the conclusion you can draw from that, really. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let's pull one from the moderator here. Do you test AV sync issues? If yes, how do you do it? Uh, no, we don't. But uh, <laughs> so I guess that answers that question. No, but I mean. Uh, the, the, that is obviously maybe something you can extend the, the test to. And by the way, that, that is a uh, tip for all of you here that all this code that we have written for this is uh, open source and check into the Chrome repository. So if you want to use it, you know, knock yourself out. So if you want to write something like that, you can probably do it. Very cool. All right, let's take another one here. Um, are you able to measure the video quality while streaming at various network conditions? Uh, no, but uh, we would love to be able to do that. I mean, uh, presumably when uh, when you have a lot of packet loss or bursty packet loss or a lot of delay or whatever, you you would expect the bandwidth estimation algorithms to adjust accordingly. And then you should see probably that, okay, 2% packet loss, well, then we got maybe 34 in PSNR or whatever. And you know then you can keep your stuff working for all customers. And I think this is something people don't do enough of, you know, verifying that, okay, it, it looks great on Google's uh, Office uh, network, but it uh, it will not work in an ADSL line in India, for instance. So that so we we have plans for that. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, we have time for one more live question. I think you got up here first. Is that or did you toss up? Okay, uh, left. Uh, please, uh, what's your name? Where do you where do you work? Uh, and your question. I'm please. Narendra. I'm from Amazon. Um, so the question I had was like, why barcodes? You might as well have written numbers in there. Um. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, it, the, we had a library for it, like uh, like I said, zebra crossing. I think barcodes are relatively resistant to normal artifacts when you encode and decode a video. So, I mean, we don't want that to be flaky, and it, it has turned out to work very well. Yeah. If if they had uh, used numbers and they would have had a uh, cookie monster instead of zebra. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Ken. Or Patrick. Patrick. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Patrick. Thank you.